Welcome back to Ispa West Farm, where we grow what we eat and we eat what we grow. In this video, we continue finishing up the chicken coop. We've built the main structure there. We've got some chickens in the coop already. What we're doing now is uh, building the area for the run. got a bunch of uh, critters that burrow through. Here's about what I'm gonna do first is dig a trench around the chicken run and then we bury hardware cloth one foot deep, one foot wide out so that the critters cannot bury through. The run is a bit on, on a slope so that's gonna be maybe two feet or so out here I'm trying to level this out so that it makes it easy to get the, uh, the structure with the um, uh, with the hardware cloth in. The tools of choice is a pickaxe and a shovel and that's really all we need. Why don't we get a uh, mini excavator? Well we could. Certainly a possibility. It would probably make it a lot faster. We're not doing this as a commercial operation so if this takes a few days longer, a few weeks longer really, that's okay too. Right? I mean if we would have um, an investment go in here, we need to pay our mortgage, we need to pay a, a, a loan back. Yeah, by all means we would make, do whatever it takes to get this done fast and, and as efficient as possible. We're not uh, in the market of um, making this into a commercial farm. Uh, so doing this by hand is probably the right way to go. It certainly takes a little bit longer. This is some pretty heavy clay. It is a good workout for sure. It saves the gym. Um, I do sleep pretty well at night. It's good to get something done by hand and um, when it's done we're gonna be proud of building something with our, our own hands. One shovel of dirt at a time. I pre-assembled the uh, sides here. These are really just two by fours, uh, eight foot long. Um, screw them together with pocket screws. I'm gonna treat the part of the of the two by four that goes into the soil with this black um, rubber coat that hopefully makes it uh, waterproof for a little bit longer than the um, other thing that we've been using before. So I'm gonna dig holes and put it in. I got some of the first support beams in for the chicken run. We've got our temporary chicken run here that's been working surprisingly well, but it's time to get to replace that with something more permanent. And the tools of the trade, of course, the shovel. I've got a hole digger to uh, dig the post holes for the framework. I've got a Oops. Tamper slash digging tool that's been very helpful. We've got the uh, battery-powered drill 
and a, uh, a Torx driver to uh, screw this all together. And of course a variety of levels, post levels, speed square, gasoline powered post hole digger that we picked up at Harbor Freight. It's been nice. Um, right now we probably wouldn't need it. It's easy to manually dig a hole when the soil gets uh, harder then that really helps. Tape measures in various state of disintegration. That one just fell apart. I'm going to bring the pre-assembled uh, eight foot wide, eight foot high framework in, drop it in, level it, screw it together, do the next one, wrap it around from the other side. Then you make sure it's 16 feet wide on the back so that it matches and we can close the whole thing up. I'm almost done. I've got one more section left. Either that's going to be a total disaster or it's going to pop right in. We need to finish the chicken run. We've, I've got the uh, support beams up. Next thing is to put a hardware cloth down. Uh, the whole purpose of building the trench was to be able to have a, a hardware cloth buried in the ground so that the burn anim boron animals can't get through. We've got 32 chickens now in all sort of waves. Uh, the oldest ones are about to lay eggs, we hope at least and the youngest one just uh, hatched this morning.
We dug in the hardware cloth into the ground, a foot deep, foot wide to the outside. That should keep the critters and the boring animals away. I put a soil bag on, this is gonna settle. Now we had a bit of a rain shower during the last few days, so the whole thing is not really square anymore. I'm gonna push this back in, try to make it square, tamp it down, put a support on the top, and then we'll put hardware cloth on the top to uh, seal it all up. One of the things I've observed is that the uh, prairie soil here, the Houston black clay, is extremely sticky. It sticks to the shovel, then I don't have an edge anymore that I can cut through the soil. If there are any plants or any, any fibrous material in there, it wraps around, the whole thing becomes one big blob that's really hard to push through. Now there was a uh, blacksmith up in the prairie, up in Illinois, I think. His name was John Deere. He started coming up with a really smart idea that he polished his plowshare and could cut through the um, prairie soil. So I'm wondering, maybe I should pol get a polishing wheel and polish up my shovel and um, uh, possibly that makes that, that problem a little bit less of an issue or makes working on soil with uh, basic hand tools, shovels and, and pickaxe a lot easier. I think you can buy stainless steel uh, shovels that, that are polished and shiny. I will seed some prairie uh, flowers or prairie uh, vegetation up here so that we get the soil covered. If you like this kind of video, please give us a thumb up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And if you want to follow us on the East by West farm, please subscribe. And we're going back in the pool. Oh yeah, we're going back in the pool.